Hello, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to a brand new video. Thank you so much for joining me today. It, it is evening, it is nighttime. So in that case, good evening, everybody. So this evening's video and the reason why it's kind of uh, an okay thing that I'm filming in the late evening for this particular video is because the subject at hand that we're going to be talking about today really doesn't like the light. They don't like the light, they don't like the sunlight, and they prefer to be out and about at nighttime. What am I talking about? What could I be talking about on a plant channel with that? Plants that love light. Today I'm talking about one of my favorite go-to methods whenever it comes to pest maintenance. Houseplant pest maintenance and treatment. So I'm talking about, so if you've been here a while, you probably know because I have talked about it before, but it's been a while. I'm talking about nature's good guys, good bugs, army bugs, beneficial nematodes. Beneficial nematodes are the only type of beneficial insects that I have purposely brought into my homes and released in my plants. I've been using them for about three years now. And typically I will get a new batch and treat at every season change. And I'll get into why I do that along with some quick information on these guys. And then I'm gonna show you and tell you how I use them. All right guys, so I've mentioned so many times, it's honestly like ridiculous at this point how much we talk about spider mites on my channel. Um, and that's because as a person, a plant parent with over a hundred house plants, let's just say, not sure how many, somewhere between a hundred and 250 maybe. I really don't know. I haven't counted in a while. Regardless, someone with a rather large house plant collection, you can imagine, or you know, if you also have a large house plant collection, that house plant pests are a problem. And it's something that I don't think any of us have really truly figured out how to prevent altogether. I don't think that's possible when we're growing live plants in our home with dirt in pots, <laughs> hundreds of dirt pots sitting around. It's bound to happen, right? Just like if you're growing a garden outside, you have to watch out for and treat for insects or they will destroy your garden. It's the same concept with houseplants. So anyways, I have said over the last few months specifically, carrying in from spring to summer that I wanted to explain a little bit, go a little bit into depth, if you will, about why I have not really gotten a break in terms of spider mites over the last few months. They've really just been in my house relentless. I have been treating all of the foliage on my house plants. I even took everything out of my tent, cleaned and treated all of the plants and washed the drainage trays, wiped down the plant stands, the whole nine yards. And a couple of weeks later, uh, the infestation was right back just as bad as it was couple weeks prior which is unusual when you're dealing with spider mites um, no it's not unusual for them to like come back and you have to do a couple extra treatments or find mites you know here and there on other plants but for them to come back that quickly and that aggressively in that short amount of time tells me all I need to know so I have not treated with beneficial nematodes. I believe it was since last winter, 2021. Again, that's unlike me. And whenever I do this, I definitely learn my lesson, skipping out on my nematode treatments. So that's what we're here to talk about today. Basically, you might be having this issue too, where you have either thrips or spider mites or even fungus gnats. These are wonderful for fungus, fungus gnats. Honestly, they get rid of the fungus gnats every single time. First, let me tell you what they are. So I'm gonna read you what the paper says beneficial nematodes they are live bugs obviously but they are microscopic so you can't see them unless you have a special microscope to put them under uh, they just look like dust and i will show you here in a moment they are a predator to 200 plus soil dwelling pests nature's good guys aka soldier bugs beneficial nematodes are live microscopic worms that hunt down and kill soil pests beneficial nematodes are found naturally in your soil by increasing the population you are able to control over 200 plus soil dwelling pests beneficial nematodes attack pests in their larval and pupal stage in the soil but have been known to attack pests above the ground in all stages as well. Beneficial, beneficial nematodes can be used indoors and outdoors, anywhere developing pests exist, including vegetable gardens, lawns, greenhouses, indoor gardens, indoor plants, trees, and shrubs. Nematodes actively hunt for insect larvae, entering through the natural body openings. Ooh. 
Once inside the larva, the nematodes excrete bacteria from its digestive tract before it starts to feed and multiply. Within a few days, the pest will change color and die. The nematodes multiply and develop within the dieting insect before leaving the old host to hunt for more pests. As the number of pests decrease, so will the nematode population. For this reason, seasonal releases are recommended. Ding, ding, ding. Let's get into a little bit of uh, upkeep with them, or how do you keep them? Once you get them, they will, or they should arrive on an ice pack, and you really want the ice pack to still be at least cool whenever the nematodes arrive, because they need to be kept cool to survive. So th the thing is, I have had a couple instances in the past and today is no different because it also happened where I get my nematodes and the ice pack is completely melted and the package is hot. And what I do is I reach out to the company on Amazon and tell them and get them to send me another batch. Anyways, you want them to be cold. I still use them even if they're not cold. So or like, cause I don't know, I don't have a microscope to look at them and see if they're moving. So I just use them with the hope that they are alive or at least some of them are alive. And then when I get my next batch, I'll just continue treating with those. And you know, so anyways, st storage temperature between 36 and 45 degrees Fahrenheit. Do not freeze. Store unactivated nematodes for up to 30 days in your refrigerator. Once activated, which activated means once you pull the nematodes out and mix them in your water jug, the nematodes must be released within six hours. So within six hours of mixing them in your jug, you must use them or they're gonna die in the water. Store nematodes in the dark. Nematodes are susceptible to ultraviolet light, so UV lights. Nematodes are susceptible to various chemical pesticides. That's another point. Use caution when treating other diseases and pests. So if you use like a systemic granule pesticide in your soil, you should probably wait about six months since you last used that before you use nematode, nematodes or it could just kill them once you add them to your soil. If there's a pesticide in the soil, for optimal results, the ground surface should be moist, water before application, and keep the soil moist for two weeks after application, which we know isn't really possible with houseplants, so just water as usual, basically. And nematodes are microscopic worms that naturally naturally occur in the soil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, on the back here, there's also different types of nematodes you could get, which I never really paid attention to before, but I did this go around. So it shows a list here just from this company of the types that they have. So they have one that's for grub and soil pest exterminator and it's HB which I will put the name on the screen of what that stands for because I can't pronounce it but it's the type of nematode you're purchasing and then they have one with SF which is a fungus gnat and root knot exterminator but they do target other insects as well there's a list here of all the different pests that each initial targets and kills um, so they also have a flea and soil pest exterminator which is SC they have a triple blend exterminator, which is what these guys are here that I purchased this go around. So it's HB plus SF plus SC. So it they basically target and kill everything that you could have in your soil pretty much. So that's nice. And then there's one with just HB and SC. And then there's one with HB and SF. So we got the triple threat today. Yeah, that's basically why I use them. And that is why I believe I've not been able to get my um, spider mite outbreak under control as of lately while well, they've been coming back so aggressively and I also have a pretty gnarly fungus gnat issue at the moment so perfect timing kill everything that's alive on the leaves and you guys know I've showed how I do that many many times I use isopropyl alcohol probably 20 to 30 percent isopropyl al alcohol and then 70 to 80 percent filtered water and then just a drop of Dr. Bronner's unscented soap. And I also use that on my baby in the bath because she has very sensitive skin and pretty bad eczema. Clean the leaves with that and the stems but if you're not also treating the soil uh, the issue is that the spider mites uh, fungus nights are really bad about this they lay all of their eggs in the uh, top dressing or the top soil of our plants and then the adults die off and all the new babies just continue the cycle by hatching out of the soil and flying around laying more babies and it's just like a never-ending cycle and that's why they're so very difficult to get rid of spider mites they're not going to be laying eggs in the soil as much as fungus gnats because they do lay on the back of the leaves as well and um and creases and stuff on the leaves and dents but they can and do lay eggs in the soil drop down in the soil and then 
cleaned everything on the foliage and they hatch out of the soil and they come right back and the cycle just like starts over. So that's why it's important, important for me, especially in my experiences, that I not only treat all my plants, uh, but I also use beneficial nematodes. It's better to use it as a pre preventative measure before it even gets to this point, just to keep everything at bay, but I failed to do that, so here we are. So that's what I do, and uh, I'm gonna show you guys how I do it. It does have some instructions, but I kinda just do it my own way, if I'm being honest, within reason, of course, but in terms of mixing, so you can mix anywhere from one to five gallons of water. So I have one gallon of water here, filtered water, and then basically I suppose a whole pack, which the, there's five million. Um, depending on how many you get, you can get different amounts, but you wouldn't think there was five million here, right? You can get different amounts, but uh, this particular amount, I assume, it says one to five gallons. I don't know if I lost a paper, because I do think there is a paper that's supposed to tell you how many to add per amount of water, per gallon of water, and per like square foot, I think. But I don't see it on this paper. I think I lost it somehow. This should make, I think, at least five gallons. I could be wrong. Um, this will make several gallons. So I just kind of am estimating on how much I put in my water. It's not like critical that you get an exact amount of nematodes per water, but you do wanna have plenty in there so that plenty of nematodes are getting in each pot when you're watering, you know? I'm gonna go ahead and open these guys, flick them down because I don't want them spilling. They can be kind of expensive. But yeah, they're just like this gray, tan, powdery dust looking stuff. And they do have kind of a funny smell, by the way. So just throwing that in there. Let me grab my scissors and I'll be right back. Some measuring spoons. And I have shown myself doing this before, I believe in a vlog, like maybe last year. It's been a year ago, I would say at least. But I wanted to make a video dedicated to this because... So it's just easier to find. You don't have to go try to search for a vlog and figure out which one it's in and all of that if you're curious about beneficial nematodes. So I'm gonna use a half a teaspoon here. Yeah, they have a funky smell for sure. And they're just this powder stuff, <laughs> basically. Hopefully these guys are alive because like I said, the ice pack was in fact melted which is not a good sign. I'm just kind of banking on the fact that maybe it wasn't melted for too long and at least some of them are still alive. It's also kind of gross thinking about storing these in your refrigerator, but I should also add they are not harmful to humans or pets whatsoever. They can't bite you. They're not going to come out and get on you. If you get them on you, it's totally fine. If you inhale them, it's fine. Like, ooh, gross, right? But they're not going to hurt you or harm you in any way. So now I'm just going to shake up the water and you want to let this set for about 30 minutes before you um, Add it to your soil and start watering so I'll pour this in my watering can and I'll just kind of target one section at a time it's also a really good idea to let your plants that you're gonna be treating dry out really well like kind of if you're gonna underwater or like hold off on watering this is a good time to do it so you don't overwater and like rot your plants because you know if you've recently watered you don't want to go back in with more water even with the nematodes because you know so we're gonna let this set for 30 minutes. I hope I put enough in there. The water should turn kind of like that dusty tan color. You should be able to see them kind of floating around once they're activated, so they call it. I hope I added enough. I might actually go ahead and add, you guys, another little tablespoon or something. And people say, well, how do I know if they worked? If you have a bad enough infestation or if you normally get infestations and you use these seasonal, you're going to know because you're not going to have bad. You might have a few pests here and here, here and there, but you're not going to have bad outbreaks like you would if you don't use them. 
and you'll notice within like a week I would say the fungus gnats are gone because the adults die off they have a really short lifespan it's like kind of crazy so that's not the issue the issue is that the babies the larvae just keep hatching out and flying around and laying more eggs so you gotta stop it where it starts and that's the life cycle down in the soil okay we'll be back in 30 minutes and we're gonna water you want to water in it says i believe it's like super early morning before the sun comes out or at nighttime. that's when it's best all right y'all i have my watering can here it's been about 30 minutes they're not as flaky as they normally are i can't really see them in the water but <laughs> i just have to assume i know they're in there because i put them in there Normally the water just looks more dusty and flaky. I don't really know how to explain it. Okay, y'all, that's pretty much going to do it for this video. I just really wanted to dedicate one to the point little video explaining the whole process, why I use them, why I love them, why I stand by them, and I think that they work. Uh, as long as you get them when they're alive and you don't kill them before you use them, I promise you they will get rid of any larva, whether it be fungus gnats, thrips, uh, the kind that I got targets thrips as well um spider mites whether you're dealing with like outdoor gardens and outdoor pests beneficial nematodes are wonderful and what i really like about them is that they are little army bugs they're good bugs but i can't tell that they're bugs like because i can't see them moving or crawling they just look like dust and they don't like come out and get on me i feel really comfortable and content using them regularly like i really wanted to bring in some lace wings and i actually ordered some a while back I believe it was like at the beginning of spring but they came to the wrong address because i have two addresses and it's like a whole thing usps won't deliver to my house and so basically it got sent back and i just never did another purchase beneficial bugs are good bugs and i'm getting more comfortable and really opening up to the idea of bringing more different types of beneficial bugs into my home or at least in my grow tent perhaps but um yeah uh, give this video a thumbs up if you found it informative or if you also enjoy using beneficial nematodes if you have used them or do use them regularly as myself part of your pest maintenance prevention regimen please do leave me a comment below let me know your experiences but other than that thank you so much for watching and i'll see you again in my next video i love you guys bye